Okay. So, we are looking at molecular structure of acids and bases. You have to have your strong acids and bases memorized. Got to have those down. Now, shouldn't be too hard because, again, you got a few strong acids. Bases have the hydroxide. So, when you have these form, you have water and a salt. Now, the salt can hydrolyze, meaning go backwards into an acid or a base. Water plus the salt maybe makes an acidic, maybe makes basic, maybe neutral. You got to determine that. And that's what we saw with some of those weak acids and bases with titrations is we saw the fact that we had to determine what that pH was above or below that equivalence point based off of if the salt made a, or the conjugate base made a uh, acid or base. So some guidelines here. If the cation is from a strong base, anion is from a strong acid. Okay, so acid base, such as you look at, these are from strong bases. These are from strong acids. Both ions are neutral, the pH will be neutral. Okay, because these salts just simply dissociate into water. Cations from a strong base, anions from a weak acid. So cation, strong base, strong base, strong base. Weak acid, your acetic acid, HCN, HF. The cation is neutral, the anion is a conjugate base. Therefore, it's going to be basic. Okay, so you've got your conjugate base plus water, it's going to make this plus hydroxide. So, basic. The cation is the conjugate acid of a weak base. Remember how we talked about weak bases having a lot of ammonia? Mmm, ammonia. The anion is from a strong acid. Your HCl, HNO3. Cation is acidic. Anion is neutral, so we got acidic again. Acid making more protons in solution. Cation is conjugate acid of a weak base. Anion is a conjugate base of a weak acid. So again, got your ammonia going on along with um, your weak acid, acetic acid, or HCN. Acid and base. Now this is where the fun begins, right? So if the Ka is greater than the Kb, the solution is acidic. Kb is greater than the Ka, it's basic. If it's equal, it's neutral. I don't see how it could ever be equal except for, no, because water is not salts. I don't see how this could be true, but maybe they make up a hypothetical one, okay? So this is the hardest area, but these are also like the weirdest examples, right? These ones look weird. These ones are like ammonium salts that we've talked about before. These ones are common salts. So really the hardest ones that you have to think about are going to be the weirdest ones. One last situation is when we don't have strong acids and strong bases or weak acids or weak bases involved. So the cation, highly charged metal ion, something like aluminum, iron, some of our transition metals, and the anion is a strong acid, nitrate chloride. The hydrated cation acts as an acid because it's so positively charged. This is where we get some complex ions. And we don't need to understand the chemistry here. It's just trying to illustrate it to you that this is where the proton comes from. So it's going to be acidic. Again, not too common. You might have a question like that on the test. Now, which makes acids stronger than each other? So far, we've talked about there's strong acids, strong bases. What happens if we have many to look at and maybe the uh, structures, but we don't have any Ka or Kb values. So remember, acids shed the hydrogen. The easier that happens, the stronger the acid. Weak acids retain or have a high attraction to the hydrogen. If the anion allows it to happen easily, then it's a weak conjugate base. Strong acids have weak conjugate bases. 
I think you should talk about that and say that over and over again till you feel very comfortable with it. I still have troubles at times. And again, think of the pressures of the test and how much is going on. So when we think of just binary acids where it's an element with hydrogen, when it's highly electronegative, it attracts the hydrogen. HF, case in point, we know that's a very simple weak acid. As you move away from fluorine, the electronegativity decreases, therefore the strength of the acid increases, right? Strong acid, strong acid, strong acid. Um, you know, so each of these are going to be there and you can see that these will start getting smaller and smaller as you go across. So keep in mind when you think of your um, acidity, away from fluorine means an increase in acidity. Bond strength. So sometimes bond strength is part of the characteristics. Higher the electronegativity difference creates a higher bond energy. Okay. Because when something has a bigger difference in electronegativity, they're going to be pulled closer together. Many of you remember that the closer something is, the higher the bond energy will be because of the Coulomb's law, right? inverse squared law. As that decreases, your bonds are going to get further away. Therefore, energy is going to be lower. So the lower the energy, the stronger the acid. Okay. Again, they're trying to release the hydrogen. If they hold on to it, that's a very weak acid because the idea of becoming an acid releases hydrogen. So electronegativity when bonded. All right, so I have this here to have some examples later to kind of show you and illustrate this a little bit better. So when an element or molecule is bonded to the section that is bonded to the acidic hydrogen, if it has a high electronegativity, this will move electrons away from that hydrogen, making it easier to be removed. The tricky ones is when they have large molecules and you're looking at just that hydrogen, what will happen when you have something very electronegative there? When you have something more electronegative close to it, it means the stronger that H plus will be leaving the molecule. So more electrons moved away from that hydrogen equals a stronger acid. So let's take a look at some of these carboxylic acids. The larger they become, the more they take away the oxygen's electrons away, making them weaker acids. So we can see the smallest is most acidic, right? Most acidic. While something you have more carbons to it, that's going to shift some of these electrons towards the hydrogen because this is very low in electronegativity. These are all very low carbon, hydrogen, and a low electronegativity to where that's going to make it less likely to lose a hydrogen. And it kind of maxes out, basic here. It kind of doesn't get too far out. However, if this was very electronegative, that's going to pull the electrons towards it. Like, let's say if there's a fluorine here, that's going to pull the electrons away from here, therefore leaving the attraction between this oxygen and hydrogen now less, making it a stronger acid. So we're looking for something, if there's a something very electronegative, bonded close to this um, kind of like hydrogen port that this is docked at, then that's going to pull the electrons away, making this a stronger acid, more likely to be released. Kind of shows it a little bit better here with some increasing acidity. So this is the bond we're trying to break, right? Chlorine, pretty electronegative, okay? Pretty electronegative. When we have more electronegativity added, right? All these oxygens being bonded, this is going to pull more and more electrons towards the chlorine, leaving less electrons or less strength of electrons here. Therefore, that's going to be able to come off. As you know, perchloric acid, HClO4, is a strong acid, while these are weak acids. The higher electronegativity pulling on the electrons bonded to it makes this bond weaker, therefore much more acidic. Some practice going through, seeing some examples, checking AP Classroom are going to help you out. Let me know what kind of questions you have, and on to the next.